had fun playing a detective, probably thanks to liberal use of my imagination to make things more entertaining. So why not try doctor? We will learn a bit about diseases, eventually cure patients, and I'll reveal to you what happens when sims get freaky but don't take care to protect themselves. Now, I'm not going to wait around 23 hours for the first shift. Most skills don't matter to doctors, and I'm frankly too old for that. So I'm going to just use a time cheat. It's what you all would want me to do. And this is why they don't let everyone just use these weird cheats because it's fun. See, I broke the welcome wagon, a vampire showing up at five in the morning, and this Sim's bladder popped sometime over the last 20 hours. Anyway, the game finally gets to the point and I get to teleport to work. I have a feeling we're gonna save so many lives the game will be overflowing with Townie. Not their children though, because NPCs are sterile and can't have children. The game tasks me to wash my hands, which is such a statement for our times. And you know what I mean? I think, hey, I know how to do that. That's easy. Just like in the song. With that knocked off, my boss is really happy with me. The dungeon master, as I'll call it. It now tells me to greet my coworkers. I agree. I mean, it's the first day. I saw a receptionist, so I'll greet him and this other guy. The dungeon master now specifies I need to chat with them. I start with simple questions you ask at work like, are you a mermaid? And how much money do you make? <laughs> it asks me to chat again right away. Now you might think this is buggy coding, but it's not rare for a doctor to do. If you've ever been in a waiting room two hours past your appointment time, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The DM rolls the same thing like five times, but I finally get bored and I move on to socializing with patients, which is much different. When it could tell I was finally over the monotony, it put me back on talking to co-workers. And no, I do not want free earbuds. Now they want me to complain about work, which I definitely earned the right to do. In the exam rooms, patients with potentially mood-threatening diseases are getting no care at all. This succinctly sums up the Sims. I have like 85% of a gold medal just from doing all that talking, and I kind of feel guilty. I mean, uh, I better do something. I find a bed to make and give Nancy Landgrab a plate of food I had in my pocket. I find that when fantasizing about superpowers, rarely do people think of how great it'd be to have a banquet microwave meal on hand at any time. Yum. I have got so much work done. The DM is pleased so I can be guaranteed a big performance boost no matter what now. So I park it in a room far, far away from those needy patients and I think about what I'm going to do with all the money I'm making. I was sure I got the promotion, I mean I hadn't looked. But instead, they give me like 150 bucks and tell me to come in one more time for the promotion. I thought the doctors made more than that. I've been assured the need to come in a second time is not due to an arbitrary coding decision. <clears throat> With day one out of the way, I can fast forward life once again. Here we go. Okay, now we're on to the stuff you've been waiting for. The DM wants me to mop up a puddle. When we're done with that one, my sim tries to do a second one, but we cannot do that. It will give us no job performance. We do get a bit more variety this time than simply talking to co-workers. My sim and I research the latest medical journals. And then we head off to deliver some pocket banquet to a patient I am deeply concerned for. Jeez. But the game wants me to make a bed. Seemingly to make room for new patients. Spoilers, but there won't be any. My co-workers don't do anything. I deliver pocket banquet and make a couple beds, but see the DM wants me to make another bed. Rather than go looking for one, I tell this patient to leave, and then I have my sim make her bed. If any more beds need made, I know exactly what to do. We get another important mop puddle task. I have my sim do it, and when he tries to mop more, I stop him. This is what you do. We do not need to do that. Even though cleaning the hospital was our job, our gameplay incentive is to do things completely unrelated to that task. I follow instructions and chat with the receptionist in the standing room where patients are waiting. The areas for sitting are purely decorative. No one who's sick would want to sit down. I mean, come on. 
A few patients decide that they would rather die than stand any longer. So they walk off with their various illnesses to ride public transit and deliver it to the other townies. At the end of a stressful day, my sim is promoted and gets some hospital decorations for in their home so they can be reminded of work at all times. I advance time once more, which again has strange consequences. Ha <laughs> ha, Vlad, who sucks now? My first day as an orderly. Oh yeah, feeling good and we need to treat two patients to get to the next promotion. I take pity on Clara Bajergson because she's been there for three days. I feel it's fair to say she's waited long enough and uh, she's relieved when I swab her. I realize that the patient on the end couldn't be swabbed because she's already been diagnosed. This is a great opportunity to get one of those two treatments out of the way. It looks like it must be starry eyes, so it must be starry eyes. Even if that is a fallacy, she's waited so long she's willing to try anything. But she has a little doubt in her eyes as I give her the dose. What do you mean qualified? Of course I'm qualified. <laughs> Through sheer luck it works. She's been cured and I'm one step closer to taking advantage of this expensive malpractice insurance. Now we get to do some serious doctor business, analyzing a patient's sample. Clara's saliva needs investigated, and I think the DM is on my side. That feeling will not last for long. I go to do another swab and... Holy crap, she's made of plastic! <coughs> I analyze a sample on the most disgusting machine I've ever seen. Someone should clean that someone who isn't me. I realize I'm really screwed now. I can only do the objective in the middle. See, the exam room beds are all empty and all I can do is chat and deliver pocket food until it finally gives me something I want to do. Mop up the puddle in the lab. That thing had been bugging me for hours. I guess that the doctors you see around the hospital, they are kind of doing something because now I have to give someone medication or else I will not get promoted. I assume they are right in their diagnosis and I assume no liability if things go wrong. But it works out. Barbie is treated for starry eyes. The second case today. Either there's been community transmission or our world has a limited selection of ailments. It felt like I did a lot of great work today. Our medical system is less treatment and more hospitality. Because I kind of feel like I work in a hotel, cleaning and delivering meals while distributing drugs on the side. Don't worry, kids. Just keep standing. I'll be back tomorrow. <sighs> I'm sorry I let you down, everyone. I didn't get the promotion, and I don't think it was possible with the circumstances I had. I see three days until the next shift. I understand I'm approaching middle age, and I don't have time to play them out before I'm dead. So you didn't see this. Now that I think about it, I should die out the gray, lease a Mustang, and enter into an adulterous relationship before my time is up. <laughs> Okay, on to less real talk. Um, as you rank up, Doctor gradually unlocks more responsibilities for you. So we wouldn't really see anything new if I went in a second time on the same rank. So yeah, I skipped about five days and gave myself one promotion. So work day four it is. It's prank day and I now have to treat three patients. I'm sure tying my job performance to how many I treat will lead to outstanding medical care and won't prove problematic at all. Right away, I go and stick a kid and get one of the three knocked out. I mean, on the one hand, he was a good sport about it, but in my cynical mind, he's just too dumb to be worried. A sad fact about this whole dungeon master random objective system is, unless you design it really well, it's going to fail people constantly. I said fact, not opinion. See, I transfer Alex from 13 Reasons Why to another doctor, but now I can only do one of the three objectives. There aren't even patients if I'd want to admit them to open up my options. So I research on the computer because it's all I can do, and I'm incentivized to wait until I'm told to give a patient a shot to treat these poor idiots. 
I really, really wish it were things like keep the hospital clean or tend to patients so the player could do good for the Sims in their mind and still meet objectives. You're in luck, kid. The DM says you get to live. It'll reward me if I give you a shot for your bloaty head. I'm in hospitality, a janitor, I'm a phlebotomist, radiologist, lab tech, and pharmacist, and I'm only level 4. Treating the patients once the doctors have diagnosed them has set me to get a promotion, assuming I had the patience for it. At this point, I actually admit a patient because it says chat with a patient, and I need to x-ray someone. It backed me into a corner, and now I've moved the line for those people for once. We know I'm going to cheat, so I'm not sure why it matters, <laughs> but I'm trying to earn gold here. As bad as the DM is, it's slowly opening up the options for me so that I should not have these problems much longer. See, Doctor is probably a career that gets better later on. As long as you're not burned out by all the other things you've done by the time you get there. You could send your sim to work sometimes, though. In this case, the game is the problem. See, I need to examine Alex's eyes, but I cannot do so because this so-called doctor is blocking the exam bed. So I cuss at him, as anyone would do in this situation, and I get at it. I cure Alex's many, many issues and shove the doctor around. Normally, laying hands on your superior would be a problem, but we do not punish shitty behavior at Sims Hopkins. I didn't get the promotion, but you knew that, right? Oh wait, I did, and you didn't see a damn thing. Time cheat time. Oh crap, I broke everyone and Bajorn is starving to death while the fruitcake from Bella Goth is still laying on the ground because no real time has passed in my neighborhood. Entering Sims Hopkins, I'm greeted by a strange sight. A Sim is talking to the big stuffed Triceratops. I have never seen a sim use it, so that was kind of interesting. She seems a bit childish, if not outright crazy. Anyway, now we get to treat a patient and actually diagnose them, so I'm going to take this super cereal. The DM kind of shows its weakness again, in, in that I only really have one goal for a promotion. But if I want performance, I need to do tests when they're requested of me. I can't just run a battery of tests blindly or I might end up with no objectives I can do. Anyway, while analyzing the kid's swab sample, the woman from earlier shows up to play with toys and distract me with her stupid talking in the lab room. It turns out she's an orderly. And she's doing about as good as I did in my first days, I guess. Yeah, she seems unwell, but the other doctors and nurses not doing their jobs is much less obvious, so we should probably cut her some slack. The machine broke down on me, so I had to redo the analysis. While things like this are happening, you can actually take time to look at the patient and what symptoms they're showing. Because if you do, you have a good chance of knowing what disease it is. See, there are probably only a dozen or so, and it gets easier to remember. After just a few tests, my sim gets it down to where we know it's one of two things. Sometimes a lower level doctor will fail to get it to just one, which lets the player pick with confidence. I'm not confident, so I send the patient for an x-ray who conveniently starts the test without me. Like every other time I use the machine, I think kids being radiologists is an intended feature. In this case, we did manage to figure out that it's starry eyes. The swatting in front of their face thing is the big tell here, along with the dizziness. The spinning stars is dizziness. The starry eye part is the swatting. So, your ability to diagnose is sadly not tied to logic, but more your doctor career level. As you rank up, your odds of good outcomes improves and the rates for malpractice insurance go down. I missed that whole emergency failed thing in the corner, so I didn't manage to get the extra work performance for finishing the job. If only they had labeled it in some way that indicates it needs to be done in a timely manner. Anyway, this actually causes me a performance hit, but doing these can help you get promoted. I was just so focused on saving lives, but I guess they thought of me because the lady playing with dinosaurs should not be trusted with important responsibilities, but I beg to differ. You should already know that I fast forward again. I'm starting as an assistant nurse and the surgery table is unlocked. Oh yeah. 
Let's just hope I get to use it. I wrote that and then realized it's probably the opposite way I should feel. So this is where Doctor starts to really do a bit better as a career. If you ignore the problems I've highlighted with the Dungeon Master system anyway. I do some tests on this patient, but the bigger tests seem to do more to narrow down things. So an x-ray will help. Unfortunately, the machine is broken. This is something that's worth bringing up. If you study handiness, you can improve the hospital's bad equipment to break down less. Since other skills do not matter at all to doctor, it's probably the main go-to for improving your life on the job. So level your handiness. Once again, we need to pay attention to symptoms in case our doctor doesn't automatically figure out what's up. Doing so may give us a vital clue that can let us solve the case early. Cuckoo Pebbles here proves that anyone can repair medical equipment in the Sims universe. Okay, getting back to the exam room, this celebrity either has burning belly or llama flu. Because the game likes to make you guess, the stripes and rashes Sims can get will just come and go. So when we look at the guide, it says that Llama Flu presents with a cough, and she has the rash, while Burn and Belly does not have that. So this is a pretty simple elimination. It's Llama Flu. We could do more tests, but sometimes it comes down to 50-50 like this. With that one down, I need to diagnose and treat another patient. We decide to use telehealth to prevent any diseases from spreading. So my doctor does it long distance, which is totally intended. I probably could have fixed this, but why would I? <laughs> I uh, got to the treadmill test and I thought I wanted a thumb. So I tried to turn the room red for that, but changing the wall color made the machine delete somehow. I really don't know what happened. But anyway, our treadmill test room is blood red now, which is totally a relaxing color and not alarming at all. <laughs> Despite our efforts here at the hospital to keep things very clean, even though I haven't washed my hands since the first shift, my doctor has somehow come down with an illness himself. He has either starry eyes or triple threat, which requires surgery. No, I'm just kidding. It'll work itself out. Nothing really matters. <laughs> The following day, I'm now level 8 in the career. It's like magic. But I've broken my Sims wife and several members of the community. Thankfully, traveling resets them all, or the game would be unplayable by now. By the way, what I did is dangerous. My Sim could be dead if we fast forward while it's freezing out. But I think career clothing is like the beekeeper suit, and it protects against extreme weather. Hmm. My final day as a doctor, because I now need to deliver a baby, and if it comes up, I'll be lucky. It could take a few days. While I'm starting the shift, an objective comes up to treat a collapsed sim. So I look all over the place, and I can't find one. It turns out the DM really is pulling the strings here, and causing all these ailments. It knew! This sim would come in moments later only to collapse. So I refer him to surgery and oh my god it's a miracle. This sim can stand. Either this is divine intervention or we did not have the budget to create a stretcher animation system. I think it's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> It turns out this sim had engaged in a fetish as I found a toy inside him. I don't mind what you all do in your own home, but be careful or you might end up on my operating table. This really is when doctor kind of shines. It's just a shame it's not always this way. The option to do any test you want will come up fairly often as a run test to find diagnostics objective, which accepts most anything. This means you can focus a little more on patient care, but you're still a little subject to the dungeon master's whims. As I'm walking Marcus to the x-ray test, it hits me and I have my own Dr. House moment. It's not lupus. No, you're right, Dr. House. It's not lupus. It's never lupus. Marcus here has itchy plum bob. I know because of the itching in the name. I tried to diagnose him on the spot, but it's not going to happen due to a routing issue. So we head back and I tell him the good news. I know what's wrong and you require invasive surgery. 
We struggle with the claw machine mechanics, but eventually get the apple out of him that was causing the infection. Sew it up with a high-powered laser and Marcus is cured. I'm a rock star doctor at Sims Hopkins and it shows in how I carry myself. My patients never die on the table and I'm making gobs of money for the hospital as my vaccines never prevent a Sim returning with the exact same illness a day later. <laughs> I am a doctor. What did I get for all this work? Decorations, my wife is sure to love, and the ability to tell Sims medical advice that will surely prevent them showing up in my hospital. I did find the perfect place to use this light. Oh yeah. I think of all video types, this is the one type I enjoy most. I'll probably do at least one of these for the next pack to uh, explore the content, but don't take my humor as dunking on the game. Honestly, the Doctor career is one of the better offerings in terms of gameplay, and it's just kind of flawed. See, all three Get the Work careers have their merits. It's just that none of them brings it home. Scientist has the rewards and the ability to boss other Sims around, Detective has decent gameplay, and Doctor has the most depth in its illnesses system. It's just too bad that all three of them don't have all of these things going on. Like, it would be fun to order your orderlies around and to get some unique rewards as a doctor. It would make this system much stronger. I think that that's a point that most of us can agree on. Thank you for watching, and until next time.